Let's try a quick exercise. Head over to Reddit or any social media platform you like and search for CGI versus VFX. You will be amazed by the amount of threads debating the differences. You will find everything from students confused about which one to study to casual viewers who don't quite get the meaning and even seasoned professionals arguing the core differences. So in this video, we're gonna try to draw the line about what each concept means, what are their differences and why you should care. Over the years, the term VFX and CGI have become so common to the extent that I think have lost some of the original meaning. I'm not sure why this happened, but media outlets constantly throwing these terms around hasn't helped either. It's a bit like how your grandparents might call every video game console as a Nintendo. It's not quite right, but you get what I mean. For example, you might see headlines like top CGI movies of the 2000s, followed by VFX movies that changed filmmaking, and wonder if they are the same or not, which is something I struggled with myself. And to give you a direct answer, VFX is CGI but not the other way around. Let me explain. CGI was introduced to the mainstream with films such as Tron, one of the first ones to extensively use computer animations, or with the likes of Jurassic Park, Terminator 2, Hasta la vista. Baby. or even Toy Story, alongside with the rapid growth of video game businesses. So the word CGI stands for Computer Generated Imagery, and based on that alone, if I were to ask you what does it mean, I'm assuming you would say it is any image, or 2D animation, game, or whatever is made by a computer, meaning that even the doodles that you drew in the MS Paint can be considered CGI, which is true from a traditional sense. But what you're probably thinking about to live action films, but also in commercials, game art, social media posts, or anything else regardless of the type. For example, it can be sculpting a character, designing an environment, a fire simulation, or a car crashing. So you got the idea. Anything you can make with 3D. When it comes down to visual effects, on the other hand, the story actually goes back to the 18th century, when Oscar Ridgelander created what is generally accepted as the world's first special effects image in 1857 by combining different sections of 32 negatives into a single image to create a montage combination print, a bit like I would say Photoshop. And as the century drew to a close, another pioneer stepped in to change the course of history. So in 1895, Alfred Clark created what is commonly accepted as the first ever motion picture special effect while filming a recreation of the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. Clark instructed the actor to stand on the block while dressed in Mary's costume. And as the executioner swung the axe, Clark stopped the camera, told everyone to freeze, and had the actor playing Mary leave the scene to swap him with a dummy designed to look like Mary and resumed the filming to let the executioner carry out the axe swinging. But hey, did you notice something? The shot we are talking about was created without any computer generated elements, which highlights the key difference between CGI and VFX. You see, CGI relies entirely on computers and cannot exist otherwise, whereas VFX or visual effects is an umbrella term to refer to many tricks regardless of what they are, to create or modify footage beyond what is captured in a real live action shot. VFX includes CGI as part of the umbrella, but also any possible way a filmmaker can use to create create or edit visuals that can't be achieved by simply recording real-life footage, meaning that CGI is one part of VFX, but also includes many other techniques, some of which may not involve computers at all. For example, matte painting, practical effects, and compositing, but also some endearing solutions such as using hand-drawn animations like in Space Jam. And just like with CGI, when people hear VFX, they often think of one specific area called VFX compositing, which is the reason why many people who aren't doing much on set say, just leave it for post, or we will fix it in post, because it is a process of taking visual elements from different sources and combining them into a single cohesive image or video sequence. And it is typically used to create complex visuals that would be really rough or even impossible to capture in real life. And with 
this definition, we are looking at two main tricks. First is the bending of different live action footage, such as mixing and matching shots from various cameras or takes, or adding practical effects that were recorded separately. The second option is mixing real footage with CGI, making them look like they belong together, such as combining a CG character and an environment. Now, achieving both of these features requires a technical understanding of compositing with complex software such as Nuke, Fusion, or even After Effects, as well as developing an eye for making things that can look natural when combined together, such as a perfect color balance and shadows. To put this into perspective, every compositor has a collection of skills within their toolbox. First up, you have keying, which is the process of making green screens or any color in a shot for that matter, which can be used to replace environments or backgrounds. Then there is tracking, which is the ability to analyze and follow objects, people, or any moving things, or camera movements within the footage to integrate other elements, especially CGI elements, and have them move along perfectly. Around the same area you have rotoscoping, which is basically tracing around stuff in a shot and isolating it, to either add something else behind it or mix it with another shot altogether. But you also have other techniques such as color correction, cleanup, depth of field, and so on. Now, when it comes to shots which are 100% computer generated, well, that's where opinions start to split. Some would argue that these CG shots are just another type of visual effects, while others claim that it is straight up CGI. Unless, of course, you start mixing it with real life footage. Especially when you remember, technically speaking, CGI can be anything and everything made with a computer. So, I get where they are coming from. And it makes it easier to avoid the whole cycle of confusion and questions. However, by definition, it is still a form of VFX, for example, fluid simulations, rigid bodies, and particles, either by making entire CG shots or by creating VFX elements to composite with live action footage, such as explosions, smoke, magic, debris, or anything else. But it is not just limited to that. The entire 3D pipeline can be classified as a VFX project or a VFX production, either by modeling assets, sculpting characters, doing animation, texturing, or creating environments. Then there is the entire debate of whether real-time effects in video games are considered VFX or not. And this includes also animated movies, VR experiences, and so on. Once again, I would say yes, but I think it depends on who you ask. To help you understand better, look at it this way. There are traditional VFX jobs that revolve around compositing skills, which are objectively classified as visual effects. Then you have computer graphics that you can pursue as a standalone career or education. These CG skills can be used in many areas, such as the video game industry, education, or commercials. Then you have VFX, which to the average Joe refers to the techniques used in films, television, or other media to create or edit videos that cannot be captured on camera. So you can transfer those CG skills and be considered as a VFX artist. After all, CGI is a big part of VFX, even though many think of compositing when they hear the term VFX or VFX artist. However, if you want to work in movies, it is recommended to pursue CG education that focuses on that domain, either at school or by learning it yourself. And there you have it guys, if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.